All right, this is take two. Starting to live stream again. I'm trying out 720p today with 15 frames a second, and Game Show just kind of used all my CPU there for a minute. So I'm still trying 720p. I'm just hoping it was a little glitch with it. Um, this is just a compromise to try and get set high HD videos with a high frame rate and still get it all in less than two megs uploaded per second. What's up, Rocket Bunny? <laughs> you guys. Okay, so I messed up on this thing. I'm trying to fix a bug where you can, when you use a controller, uh, you can no longer use the keyboard. I don't know why. I think it has something to do here with button times. So I'm trying to fix up the button times. Third. Um, right, so in phase gear, it kept looping over, right? As soon as, oh, I know what's going on. As soon as it clears the input, because it goes here and goes e.input.clear. Ah, so I think this is no longer needed. Let's find out. Yes, I replied to your um, I replied to your Twitter message about that. Yes, there are if statements, and I pointed you once again to Shaderific.com. Shaderific.com has some excellent materials and references on everything you can do in GLSL. If statements, for loops, everything you can pause, all the functions you can use in GLSL. Just go to shaderific.com. It's got that stuff. Okay, it's not like in, uh, I think it's because it's still broken here. Oh, now it's, now it's just starting over and over and over. Okay, so we do need to reset or something. We need to show that it's, how can we, I want, I want the button time to reset. I guess I need to fix the other, if I need to fix this problem from the other way around. The, this way around, if I fix this, it's not gonna affect the game rightly. I gotta check the game first, and then come into the menu and make sure this is all working. So, okay, I need to find a better way to debug this problem from a different angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Salad Dongs is saying here that basically it, that um, the GPUs, they, they run your GLSL code in parallel. So there's multiple cores on a shader or on a GPU, and each one of the cores is working on a different line of code that's in your own shaders, right? One might be here and one might be there or whatever. The thing is when you use conditionals, if statements, they're called branches, and whenever something branches, the GPU has a harder time optimizing the way it does things because it can do so much at once. Shaders can do so much, run so much code at once. So um, basically, it's something to take in mind. It's not really something you really need to learn too much at first when you're just barely getting started with shaders. But down the road, it's going to become something important for optimizing your shaders and that you understand how how GPU cores work. But for now, when you're just figuring out what an if statement is in GLSL, I would think you just want to, uh, you know, explore that first. Once again, that's shaderific.com, Rocket Bunny. Shaderific, like this. And then you want to go to uh, GLSL. And then 
statements, GLL, GLSL statements, there you go, for loop, do while, continue, break, if statement, there you go, Let me put, I'll post this link for you. Right, yeah. Yes, that's a great way to put it there, Salad Dongs. Mm hmm. Especially on Fragment Shaders, totally. Fragment Shaders run so much more than your Vertex Shaders. A Fragment Shader runs for every pixel, a Vertex Shader runs for every vertex. There's like a bajillion more pixels than there are verte vertices. Okay, another way to debug this problem. Let's make sure we still have the problem. Okay, we use all these buttons. controller now yeah none of the keyboard keys work tried procedural animation no I haven't I'd love to try that Have you seen rain world right rain world's a great example of procedural animation done extremely well -y. extremely well -y right so it's not letting me press up or down because it already got some input from this stuff no, it's literally applying the input every single tick, isn't it? Oh, oh. Input. Hmm. Button times. I think this is all wrong. I didn't think this through. This is how it was before. Here's the code I just wrote. The problem is... Oh, you never heard of Rain World? Oh my god. Jeez. I can't believe you never heard of Rain World. I gotta show this on the stream, man. Yeah, Rain World is amazing. It's like, uh, it's not 2D. It's entirely 3D. Their game is entirely 3D. They're using procedural animation. They just basically take a 3D stuff and convert it all down into 2D animations. It's, they call it procedural animation because it's just, they're kind of using 3D stuff to create 2D pixels. It's pretty it's pretty simple. <laughs> he lives on Mars. Does everybody knew he lived on Mars, right? I knew I knew Salad Dongs lived on Mars. You didn't know that? Yeah, if you guys haven't seen Rain World, check us out. It's published by uh, Adult Swim, the company that makes it. What is it? Is this again? Uh, what are they called? Video Cult, that's right. I saw, I heard an interview from this guy um, with uh, GameSpot. Cool, cool people, great artists. 
you know, great designer. They've been working on this game for like five years. Look at this awesome fluid dynamics. Do you see that? It's just incredible. I can't wait to buy this. It's coming out pretty soon. I think it's coming out either this summer or, or like right now, this spring. I'm not sure. But anyways, it's a good one to put on your wish list if you don't have it, if you don't have anything, if you feel like that. <clears throat> I gotta learn a different idea here. I'm thinking maybe it'll always set the button time if it's down. Uh, but only if enough time has elapsed. So this is currently down. Oh no, 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 I gotta, pff. duh, this is before was down equals buttons, button index, if is down and not was down, then said button time. Okay, let's try that. I would like to thank the Academy and all my friends and... Okay, I'm using that, the D-pad there. Okay, I'm using buttons either on the controller. Now I'm gonna try the keyboard. Oh, it doesn't work. All right, what's up? It's one of those days where I thought I would be hauling ass, kick, solving bugs left and right, but I get stuck on the first one, of course. Um, okay, I need to be able to see what's going on. Why, why is this not working? Oh, I think I understand. I think what's happening is that every single tick, the controller, when it's being used, is sending input. Whether it's down or not, it sends like is down, false, every single tick. It makes sense for it to do that when the button is down. For it to send every single tick, like, yeah, the button's still down, the button's still down, and all that. But when it's when it's not, I don't know if it makes as much sense. You found out how hard it is to make a component-based architecture system thingy. The only thing about Game Maker that I don't like is that instead of just making a method, I have to make a whole new script. Really? Huh. Yeah, here's where it sets the greatest values. Set button down, input set button down, this set button down, this set button down. Set vector buttons, use greatest values. Button press uses values. So really, it all boils down to this method right here, where it uses the greatest values.
So I think I think what I need to do here is if um If a value has dropped below the threshold, remove it from values. Right, so we would loop over. We already got great. So all we need to do is loop over values again. And if v dot second or first I'm not sure second pecker values again you int code equals value int right is a second so v if the absolute value of v dot second is less than or equal to axis threshold then we can remove this value so we got to do Okay, we'll do erase elements. Uh, oddly enough, MATLAB, which I had to learn for a course, works the same way. What's up, wait a bit? Hello, man. You got four months of yourself on summer break. Right on. Mars of Power! Yo! Ciao, Bella! Yeah, weed a bit. Uh, I think you should take Rocket Bunny's advice there. Learn C and then C++. So, actually, I would just scratch C++ off your list at first. Don't even think about it. Just learn C. Highly recommend it, man. Promise it will be valuable. So we, we want to erase elements. Each element of this is the, the pair, um, const pair, what was that, uint, 32t type with int val, is that right? Yeah, it looks like it's going to like this method. And then absolute value, of, so we remove it. Return absolute value of val dot second is less than or equal to axis threshold. So there, that'll remove elements. Oh, this isn't working yet, is it? Axis threshold has to be captured. Mm, maybe I've just captured this. Hmm. You're for you're in Tokyo. Whoa, Marza. Wow, what's it like watching the stream from Tokyo? Yeah, I, I agree with what Salad Dongs is saying here too. Yeah, especially if you want to get into robotics, for sure. Mm, is this right? Values map. UN32 type int. Oh. I think erase elements is only. Q 
can I assign to non-static data member first? Which will be val that first with const qualified type. So what is this const? Or did I just need to do pair no const there? I'm not sure sure if this will work. Yeah, no matching function call there. Maybe I can const that. What does Japan smell like? It's almost 9 a.m. Right? You're almost you're not you're alive, man. Okay, I gotta rewrite this method. I don't think this works for, for maps. Anyways. Four. Oh, it equals values that begin. It's not equal to values that end. Don't increment if if it second is less than or equal to axis threshold. Remove it. It equals values dot erase. it else plus plus it it's a common idiom that's why I wrote this define here but oh well I had to rewrite all that for that I should probably make this a function as well yeah <sighs> Really, it's good. It's that good, huh? The, the, the sashimi and the sushi. Rocket engine. Yeah. Okay, if I use this. I've used all these buttons now. Oh, it has cleaned up the values though. Now, oh, oh, I totally can use the up and down still. All right, so this is a step in the right direction. Okay, if I press left though, it works, but it's like it stops me. It's because the it's because the controller is, is still taking over a bit. Wait, no, is it because I never triggered left and right? Oh, that's what it is. The second I actually have triggered all those buttons and then let go of them, it allows me to use the keyboard input. Let's see that a second time. So I'm starting out, I haven't pressed left, right, or up or down on the controller. I'm okay. Now I'm wiggling the controller a little. And now I can't use left, I can't use right. Yeah, it's until I've done this once. Is that? Man, I need to see like maybe some more debug input. Yeah, I need to see better debug input. This is ridiculous trying to debug this without any any good visuals. All right, wait a bit. See you, man. Good luck with everything.
Okay, we got to step in the right direction. I think it's better though if I have input showing all, every single tick. Where is the debug output? It uses, where does it get to game scene? Set camera label, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna go to input system. Actually, maybe I should do it all right here. You can grab the players. Yeah, let's do it all right here. This is uh show controller values show input show player one's input component So, why doesn't it like that? Oh, doesn't have int. Your opinion, what is the best type of game to make with a component architecture? Oh man, all of them. All of them, Rocket Bunny, that's my answer. I'm sticking to it. No, I'm actually not sticking to it, I changed my mind. There's some games where it's not better to actually create a component architecture, and it's usually games that you can complete in like a weekend, you know? Any kind of game that you think you could possibly get done in a, in a Ludum Dare jam, or any kind of game jam, anything that's a very, very quick game, you probably don't want to invest the time into creating a component-based architecture. But for everything else, anything else that you're going to spend a lot of time making a game, a component-based architecture is going to make you a more rapid developer in the long term. But it does take a minute to get set up and to understand it first and to get used to how those work and to make one yourself and all that. It's, um, it's a bit of an effort at first, but once you're there, you're a quicker, you're a faster game developer. I did, right? Thanks to you guys. Getting me to pronounce things right. What? Constance. Jesus, what? Oh, I need int. Yep. Ludum Dare. 
Yeah, no, some people, apparently Rocket Bunny, the official way to say it is actually Dare. Yep, Ludum Dare is how, is, is, is commonly accepted as well, but is not actually correct. Man, I'm getting distracted. Where the hell was that? Dot input. Here we go. Okay, I want to show the player one's input component all of the buttons they currently have down. And the button time that was last set for that button. No problem. All right, I got this. For auto, no int i equals zero i is less than k number of buttons i swear that's a thing what's up Oh, it's came num buttons. Okay, SS out. We're going to look up uh, words. What's up, Selkie Shiv? Game to give, huh? Hell, let's just go like this. Words. Okay, buttons. I. is down's going to be 0 up's going to be 1 so input dot buttons eyes i think that's a true or false And then the last thing we want on here is the amount of time that's elapsed since the button was pressed. So that's going to be uh, go x100 um, now is going to be let's get now now equals kit time word order is usually only by convention really I never knew that Whoa, Mar yeah, Marza. Good thing we got Marza on the stream here now. He speaks Italian. Of course. X100. Now minus input button times I.
What? Why is it not allowing that? What's what? I don't get this. What? Words fine. I Ah, maybe because it was const or something, I don't know. It's second. And then I want to set game scene, not the camera label, but the, what's the other label? Camera label, area label, that's it. I think it's the area label. Set the area label to this. All right, hopefully we have way better debug information now and I can never have to deal with this problem again because I can clearly see what's going on. Forgot new lines. And this should be if button times is zero. What's up, Zyger? Latin is actually based off of a fever dream of an autistic boy from Montana named Mike Trent. So I guess it is the tick label that I want to change. Let's see if it works. So we've established that Ludum Dare is just not actual proper Italian, or I mean Latin. Hey, there we go. Okay, we got left zero, right one, up, down. And then see, it sets those timers running. Whenever a button is used, it gets these timers. So let's see what happens now that I now that I've got those timers running and no more input down though. Now I'm going to try and use the up button, the right button, left, down. All those work. This is really helpful information to have on the screen. Wow, I'm so glad I have this now. Can okay, we start again? This time I'm gonna barely wiggle. 
the controller. Oh, it's proper Latin, but it's not clear. Oh. <laughs> right? Because colloquialism, yes. Okay, there, I barely moved the controller. Oh, wait, what if I press um, just only to the right? There, I pressed right. Hey, wait, it's working now! Oh, don't tell me this is all because freaking Xcode didn't compile one of my files once. I've been working on this bug for like, how long? Well, at least I got this cool debug display now. This is really gonna be really helpful, I'm sure, down the road somewhere where I'm like, why isn't this working? And then I'll be like, oh, that's why it's not working. See if we can bind things properly now. Okay, the only problem is that I can just hold this down forever. Because it keeps on. Because it resets my binding each time. Okay, it's a lot closer. It's a lot closer to how it should be. I think it might even be completely correct now. The only problem is that it doesn't bind things pro well. What happens if I go straight into the game? So in phase gear, I think it might need, I might need a smarter way to show that a button has been used, either that or think about how the existing system could be better. I guess I could just change this to if it released the button. Hopefully this works. Why does it think I released the ball? Oh, because I clear the input each time. Oh, this is just the percentage hold time. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. I did the wrong bit of code here. This is all good the way it is. This here, though, 
where it actually does the equipment, I think this needs to be a little different. So it's going to loop over all the equipment and check if the button was released, not if it's down. So you're going to, if you are sitting there holding the button the whole time, it's not actually going to equip it until you let go. And I don't think it needs to clear the input once it's done, hopefully, because we were checking for the release button there. So it should just be able to let the input do its thing. So this should be better. All right, good. So I'm holding down the button the entire time. It's got this white bar at the top showing me that it's, it's done as soon as I let go. It maps. Nice. This is actually, this feels like I'm more, more in control even as a player. Oh, freaking hell yeah. It's about time we got this freaking bug fixed. And I can switch from keyboard. Oh, yeah, bug fixed. Oh, I unmapped the sword. So let's map the sword back again. I just equipped it. Huh, we need to unequip the sword if we... Okay. So I think it's just gear that I equip. Equip index. No, eat. Uh, this is ready. Ready. Equip index equals unequip. Or I guess if item is not equal to K. No. It should always be false whenever you re equip something. And I guess we should be setting the player's hero state after this. Hold on, do I do that already somewhere else in this long ass class? Set hero states, right, on closing, okay, it sets. All right, so we should be able to change out the sword. It'll unequip, and it will also cause the sword to no longer be ready and also update the player's stuff sprite so I'm gonna unmap the sword go back out oh, it still has freaking damn it all right well I'll set a breakpoint here why is that not working Almost got this bug fit. This is great. This is great to have this bug fix, actually. Alright, we got the sword. Yes, we should the sword should not be ready anymore. It's not. Good. We're setting the skin. Well, I guess it's just that the player never moves. Oh, okay, so after setting the hero state, we need to reanimate the player.
I think I actually wrote a, a K idle. Yeah, K idle there. So there, after after it resets the state of the hero, sets its skin, it's going to reanimate the idle. So I'm working on lots of bugs today, getting things fixed up because tomorrow, I'm pretty sure tomorrow, I'll be uploading another update to Steam. This is like update version 0 0.8.2 or 3 or something. Swords out, swords unequipped, out of the menu. All right, we're just standing there. How about if I re-equip the sword? Shouldn't like make it ready or anything. Cool. What if I take the sword out, unequip it, re-equip it, go back. Okay, yeah, it, it, made, it made me unready. Wait, but what if I go out, go back in? All right, cool. As long as I don't unequip anything, I'm not like resetting that. Cool. All right. So let's just do one last test here. I'm gonna run around with the controller, and I'm gonna switch back to the keyboard, and everything should be exactly the same. I should be able to run. All my buttons are fine. Oh, good. I can hold down multiple buttons and then change things around. All the buttons work. Oh yes, bug fixed. Bug confirmed. Fixed. All right, let's check us in. So what I really ended up doing was just basically re reworking how um, how buttons send their input all the time. It used to work so that the controllers would always send false input even if even if their controller values fell below their thresholds it would keep on sending false 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 this button is not down not down not down every single tick and so the solution to fixing this bug here was to make it so once a, an axis falls below its threshold it's no longer updated every single tick until the next time it comes above its threshold so i'm gonna clean up my code check it in All right. Oh, this is notable. Please go in the change log. Fixed a bug which caused um, keyboard input to not work after using a gamepad controller. Blam! All right, that's one thing done today. Can't rebind, you can now. Bam, done. And there's another bug I just fixed. It's totally related, didn't know, but that's what how bugs go. They're always related. Uh, what the hell, where was this other bug at? It was like, maybe it was in one of these purple items. No?
No, I guess it was one of these items. Oh no, hey Siri! Auto bindings. That's done. Here we go. Switching back to keyboard after using controller on Windows. The direction keys don't work. It works on every platform. It used to be a bug on every platform. That bug is now fixed. Bam. All right. Two cards down. 163 cards to go. You made a great walk animation of the day, then your power went out? Oh, it sucks. All right, since that took so long to fix that bug, an hour, I'm just going to do something super quick. I want this to be guaranteed easy as hell. I'm going to do this one. Hide the cursor after a mega seed's done. So, this is the beginning where you're, you create a game and stuff. I want to skip to menu. Ah! Oh! Poor deer. So if I enter a bunch of letters, all I want is for when I, once I've entered six letters, I want it to no longer flash the cursor. Uh, okay, so, title scene, tit scene, cursor, oh here, I think this is it. Alright, if uh, mega dot size, is less than, okay, mega seed length, then we have that cursor, otherwise we don't. Somewhere else around here, I'll write something. Okay, so I have, Great. One letter, two letter, three letter, five letter. It still blinks the cursor. Last letter. Damn you. Oh. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. Only add the cursor if it's less than the length. Not even thinking about this. Mega seed. Yeah, that, that'll work. Five letters, still got blink. Sixth letter, no blink. Delete a letter, we got blinks. Delete all the letters, we got blinks. Fill up the letters, oops. Okay, I think this is working. Now I just wanted to flash the mega seed. 
when you filled up six letters. Yeah, here it is. So if it's less than the mega seed length, we add a character. And now, if it is the mega seed length, we want to flash the mega seed. How do we do that, though? Seed label, aha. Uh -huh. Seed label, run action, flash, create. Let's flash for a whole second, no, half a second, two blinks. Pete and Wally, how's it going? How you been, man? I'm good. Good things are going great here. Songbringer is progressing every day, progressing. Alright, let's cat. Five letters to blink. Oh, it didn't work. No flashies. Why no flashies? Did it do that? Wait, seed label. Let's see if there's anything else that's affecting seed label or like stopping seed label. Wait, what's this? Where would it delete seed label? This is where it hides the menu. Okay. All right. Oh, it's already glitching. <laughs> I think it's already glitching and that's the problem. Let's confirm. C label. Stop all actions. See if that fixes it. Rainbow Kappa! No? I guess it was just the, um... Does it even get here? Let's try and do something else. What else could we use? We could use a blink. I don't want to use a blink. Oh, flash create. Of course, this flash create's not going to work. We would need to run flash on every single letter. I think that's going to work because now it's creating the sprite, each individual sprite for every letter and running the flash action on it. And that will keep the existing action intact as well. So the existing 
uh, glitch where it glitches from one font to another. Oh, this might actually crash the game though. Oh, there. It certainly turned to bright for a moment, but then it just killed it. This might be just busy work to make this be flashing, but I, I want a cool animation. I want you to sort of get this feeling of fulfillment as soon as you... Why doesn't flash work? So I'm trying another way to do the same kind of action where I tint, delay, tint, delay. Because flash does a different kind of flashiness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Different kind of flashiness. Repeat that three times. Where we tint, delay, tint again to, uh, there's some font color. There it is. It should be. Yeah, K font color. It's just K font color. It's taken so long. Ah, that's all I wanted. All I wanted was for the scene to flash. Nice! I love it. Bling bling! Oh, you have enough letters now! Bling bling! Oh, you got enough letters! Woo! Enough letters! Then it doesn't happen again. Awesome! One little thing done. Let's check that in. Another thing crossed off the list. And that's going to be it for today's stream. I'm just going to check this in. This is where it doesn't blink. If you've filled up your mega seed, and then here's where it flashes the mega seed once you've filled it up.
And done. And I'll cross this off my list. And all right, I got two cards archived during today's stream. And I think let's take a let's take a look at the um, how this all went today with 720p video. It looks like game show is running normally once again using less than a hundred and less than two hundred percent of the CPU. So I guess it was just some kind of freak accident earlier in today's stream when I had to restart it. Um, it looks like it was just some freak accident. So I guess I, I guess this worked. Today's stream was at 720p. Should still be an HD video. And it was also at 15 frames per second. And it lasted the entire stream. Didn't, didn't stop. It didn't cut out. Didn't drop. Well, I guess it did drop a lot of frames. 62 frames. But nobody complained. So I guess that it was alright. So... Anyways, um, if you guys are watching this on YouTube or whatever, please give me some comments. Let me know how this is going with the better quality videos. Um, especially comparing yesterday's 800p video versus today's 720p video. Yesterday was 800p at 10 frames a second. Today's 720p at 15 frames a second. So it's a trade-off of frame rate for quality. It's true, right? In all, in 62 frames out of all of the frames that have been in the last hour and 13 minutes. Plus the last stream before I restarted this stream. So anyways, yeah, uh, that's it for today's stream. Tomorrow's stream is day 365 and I will be having a drink and playing the game, doing a playthrough. So we'll see you guys then. Hope you have a nice day.